replicate that particular system because uh, or the particular success given the democratic practice that we have. Can that be no, the case? The, let me again thank the, the prof for his contribution because, uh, like I said, though he's not happy with me, he entirely agrees with whatever I'm saying and everything. We are just using different languages between a professor and a trader. But it's very simple. He said China was able to achieve that because of the, the discipline of their leadership. That comes to what I'm saying about issue of leadership. And he said, because their leaders were disciplined, they were able to drive a disciplined followership. So that is just what I'm saying, that we need to get it right. He said, Chamberlain, let's, talk, let's not go back to the 80s, because people will say, China, a capital, in, in the year 2000, year 2000 was $990. So year 2000, that we were already fully democratic country. China was a signatory to Millennium De Development Goals. Nigeria was a signatory to the same Millennium Development Goals, MDG, were signatory to it. China took this document, the way it was formulated, went back to China and domesticated it into their development agenda from local government to the national level and followed it holistically for 15 years. Could we have done that in a federal system? It's the same system. They followed it aggressively. They, like we said, they communicated it. So everybody believes in it. They communicated it. It's your communication that you mentioned is critical. They communicated it. So if we say, Chamberlain, the only way we can come out of this our problem is that we're going to drive from Lagos to Abuja. So every passenger in this vehicle knew where this vehicle is going. The driver is focused on getting there. So everybody believed in it. That was what China did. And that's why they were able to pull millions out of... Look at the number of people they put out of poverty. That is to wise our population. Okay, but in, in terms but of... But within this period... Instead of us pulling anybody out of poverty, about 60 million Nigerians were pushed into poverty. But is it a problem if you look at the fact that one thing we've identified here is every four years we have to go to elections. But in China, we don't have that. Uh, is that so? No, because now... No, 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 no. Don't we, I'm saying that is not, not a reason why you should... I said 60, 1,000... Remember what I said? Yeah, but, 990 per capita. But we, and in, and in, 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 in by now, it's 8,000. So they've been able to achieve 1,000%. Can any government fix the country in four years? Well, what I said before is that we are not expecting 100% result. We are expecting 100% effort. And you can put down 100% effort in one year. This is like, you know, it's a destination. You're trying to drive from one point to the other. So you can say, well, we have changed. For example, if you say the poverty number of people who live under poverty when I came in is 60 million. I should do every effort to make sure that in four years it doesn't go to 70 million. If that said, let me use this particular government, the debt was about 12 billion when it started. Today it's 22, and it's growing. They should be able to communicate, this is my 10 billion that I borrowed. I'm talking about dollars, that's okay, trillion. If we talk about 
10 tri uh, 12 trillion to 22 trillion that is about 10 trillion added if i should be able to say this 10 trillion that i borrowed this is what i invested it in that is productive communicate it people can see it so you who is now driving this vehicle is moving in the right direction people can see it they can believe in it what drives governance and what drives the economy is hope so i know we are getting to a better place and everybody will say okay because I asked that question. I mean, it's all published there. I, think, I remember in January 2015, former President Goodluck Jonathan did say no government can fix the country in four years. But if you say uh, you expect 100% effort, it's a subjective call because there are several vagaries. In fact, the ARGP, in some of their fundamental principles, they identify that, yes, they know that the business environment, fuel, power, infrastructure, those are some of the constraints they say they wanted to address. But Having identified that, isn't it clear that, look, they know where the challenge is and some of the efforts that they put in, those, they expect those, results. Those, those problems are visible to every Nigerian. It's known to every Nigerian. Even you, generally, know, know that. There's no, it's not a new problem. It's a problem that is there. It is... Every year, we're going to move even state power. We don't want... We're going to add 500. That's 500, not 1,000. Don't go to 10,000. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to see visibly that the drivers of this vehicle have moved from here to here. Of the Chinese. Look at the percentage compared to the percentage of growth of their population. Chamberlain, what is important to me is that we get a better Nigeria. That will start pulling this number of people that are said in poverty. Remember, they said India is second. With 73 million, that is 5% of India. In our own case, it's 5% of Nigerians. And it's getting bad every day. So, the so will be let's focus on governance. Let's focus on the people. What we've done is that we've abandoned governance. And I'll give you one example oh. of what happened in August, just August. Nine, nine Nigerian youth coppers were drowned in Taraba. It wasn't the headline news. It wasn't news everywhere. We were yeah. busy talking about defections, this but, and that. But, but in what... Thailand, 11 children were trapped in a cave. That was the only discussion. Well, uh, Let's it, go it, back it, to the, the It was actually in the news. And I do it was in the news, but, but it, was, also had it. it was not defection and everything. We'll get to a point. All right, we need to anchor at that point. Uh, Mr. Peter B is the former governor of Anambra State. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you, Chamberlain, for having me.